Good evening, this is Matt Bautista, and welcome to our Bible study here in Faith Baptist Church, South Metro. We are on Lesson 72 in our series, Journey Through His Story, and in this session, we are going to talk about another familiar historical figure in the Scripture's account. Well, we know him, or most know him to be Joseph the Dreamer. But before we proceed with our lesson, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that you have given to us to study your word. Father, I pray that you would give us wisdom, understanding, discernment. And I pray that you would guide us and lead us into learning. I pray that you just bless our time together, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Jacob settled in the land of Canaan after the many events that have happened in his life. Well, the land of Canaan was the land that God had promised to his grandfather, Abraham, and his father, Isaac, and that was also promised to him. Well, during that time, there was tension, however, in his, well, among his sons. Well, that's mainly because of his obvious favoritism. Now, let's read our account in our text tonight in the book of Genesis chapter 37 verses 1 to 11. And this is what it says. After again, uh, the many events of, that have happened in the life of Jacob. Well, so Jacob, Israel, lived in the land where his father Isaac had been a stranger or a sojourner, a resident alien in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, when he was 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Excuse me. Now, Joseph was the oldest son of Rachel. Well, um, Jacob's beloved wife. Remember, Jacob um, married Leah and Rachel, but maybe you, you know the story if you've been following us or if you're familiar with the account, right? Jacob married Leah, but he wanted Rachel and Leah had more sons, but when Jacob was getting old, Rachel gave birth to Joseph and then later on to Benjamin. But, well, we're talking about Joseph now. And then the, the, the center of our discussion and um, our account for the following, well, uh, towards the end of our study in Genesis would be around Joseph because the Lord had used him mightily. Now again, going back, Joseph, when he was 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The boy was with the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, those boys that we have mentioned. His father's secondary wives, that the, the, the maids of Leah and Rachel. Again, we have to remember that Rachel was uh, already gone during this time. And Joseph brought back a bad report about them to their father. Now, Israel and Jacob loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a distinctive multicolored tunic. His brothers saw that their, fa that their father favored, uh, I'm sorry, that their father loved or favored Joseph more than all of his brothers. So they hated him and could not find it within themselves to speak to him on friendly terms. Now, Joseph dreamed a dream. After um, getting this tunic, this coat of many colors in the King James, well, he dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. Why? He said to them, please listen to the details of this dream, which I have dreamed. Again, he was a young man. He was 17 years old. And his brothers, most of them, well, besides Benjamin, were all older than him. We, the brothers, were binding sheaves of grain stalks in the field. And lo, my sheaf suddenly got up and stood upright and remained standing. And behold, your sheaf stood all around my sheaf and bowed down in respect. Again, you know that um, your brothers knew that your, your father's favorite, and they hated you, and 
you ha suddenly have this dream and then you share it with them so enthusiastically. Of course, they're not going to receive it um, uh, properly. They're going to take it badly. Well, his brother said to him, Are you actually going to reign over us? Are you really going to rule and govern us as your subjects? So they hated him even more. They, they hated him already. Now, after saying this dream, after hearing this dream that he had to, to tell them, well, they hated him more for telling them about his dreams and for his arrogant words. Again, no, 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 it's not as if Joseph was being arrogant, but his words were careless and it appeared to be arrogant and he was um, presumptuous in telling them that. Well, but Joseph, we, let's continue, dreamed still another dream. After that incident, he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers as well. He said, see here, I have again dreamed a dream, again as if he did not learn the first time, but hey, he's enthusiastic. And lo, this time I saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon bowed down in respect to me. He told it to his father as well as to his brothers. But his father rebuked him and said to him, In disbelief, what is the meaning of this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come, come to bow down to the ground in respect before you? Joseph's brothers were envious and jealous of him, but his father kept the words of Joseph in mind, wondering about their meaning. Now, let's see what we can learn from our passage tonight. Well, first of all, let's see Jacob's favoritism. That, that, that attitude of his, that uh, kind of, well, again, at the end of the day, we, we can say that, hey, it was, it was um, Joseph's brother's decision to be jealous, to be envious, but we cannot completely disregard the fact that Jacob, he also was not careful and was very open. But if we thought about it, he, he was kind of used to it, right? Remember um, when, he, when he was young? Well, it was only him and his brother Esau who were the children of their parents, Isaac and Rebekah. And Rebekah favored him and their father Isaac favored Esau. So he was kind of used to favoritism. But I... In, in their setting, I mean, he had more children and they had different mothers. So uh, it was kind of more problematic for them in, in their household. But, well, Jacob's favoritism. Jacob loved, Jacob loved Joseph more than his other children. And he wasn't secretive about it. He was very, <laughs> very open about it, again, uh, for, its own, for, for his own good. And because he was the son of Jacob's old age. Well, again... Uh, um, it was also uh, something special that had uh, happened. I mean, uh, Rachel was barren, and then Rachel was praying to God many, many times. And but Rachel even got her maid Bilha to, to to help her to give give children to to Jacob. But later on, eventually, God blessed Rachel, and Joseph was born. So and Jacob was kind of getting old at the time, but still, he was able to get a son with his beloved wife, Rachel. But here's another insight from Robert Jameson in his commentary on Genesis 37, when, when the, the Bible spoke about the son of his old age, referring to Joseph. Well, Benjamin being younger, if you remember, again, Benjamin was also the son of Rachel. And yes, he was the youngest. Benjamin being younger was more the son of his old age. And consequently, on that ground, might have been expected to be the favorite literally rendered it is son of old age to him when the bible said son of his old age and the hebrew phrase for it was a hebrew phrase for a wise son one who possessed observation and wisdom above his years an old head on young shoulders so when when the bible said son of his old age it kind of referred to that it was a hebrew phrase that referred to uh, being wise as a young man so when the bible said it jacob favored joseph because he was that kind of young man so it could also mean that besides this that besides the other fact that yay it, it benjamin might have been the youngest and jacob might have been older when benjamin was born but still joseph was still also a son of his old age literally but here uh, in this context uh, having this this meaning well, 
it could also be uh, applied. And it's also a possibility. And Joseph was the son of Jacob's beloved wife, Rachel. And here's a commentary by Chuck Smith in his verse by verse study on Genesis 37 to 38. Because of Jacob and his love for Rachel, when Joseph was born, he almost became immediately a favored son of a status. So again, besides the fact that he was the son of his old age, whether that was when Jacob was old and he was born or because Joseph was that kind of young man, at the same time, he was the son of Jacob's beloved wife, Rachel. So that kind of, oh, all of those factored together, well, he's the favorite. And Jacob, because of all that, gave a distinct coat of many colors to Joseph. It's, it's nothing wrong if he gave all his children uh, a coat of many colors, but or coats of many colors, but he gave a coat of many colors to Joseph alone. Well, here's um, a commentary from the footnotes of the Amplified Bible by the Lockman Foundation. Excuse me. The meaning of this word is uncertain, the, the, the coat or multicolored tunic some sources indicate that it refers to a long-sleeved tunic that reaches the ankles, essentially a light robe. In any case, the tunic was a visible reminder to Joseph's brothers of their father's favoritism toward him. And here's a commentary from David Gusick in his study, Joseph is sold into slavery concerning the coat of many colors or the, the, the multicolored tunic. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. Jacob's favoritism of Joseph was plain to everyone, including Joseph himself. As an outward display of his favor, he gave Joseph a tunic of many colors. This signified a position of favor, princely standing, and birthright. It was a dramatic way of saying he was the son to receive the birthright. And again, Jacob might have had it in him because again, of, of his past, of, of how his family was during during du, du, during that time when he was young in, in in his father's house with with his mother Rebecca and his father Isaac between him and Esau. So again, we, this might have contributed to how Jacob was with his children. And David Kuzi continues, according to Boyce, the real idea behind the ancient Hebrew phrase for tunic of many colors is that it was a tunic extending all the way down to the wrists and ankles as opposed to a shorter one. This was not what a working man wore. It was a garment of privilege and status. The man who wore a tunic of many colors watched others as they did hard physical labor. So again, if it had that connotation uh, behind it, and of course, the, the, the other brothers of Joseph would really, really mind it. Then, Jacob's favoritism was obvious to his other sons and it caused them to hate their brother Joseph to the point that they could not even speak to him on friendly terms. It was that bad. And again, was it um, completely Jacob's fault? No, but did it contribute? Yes. But um, were Joseph's brothers accountable for their own feelings? Of course they were. But again, Joseph being the head of the family, being the father, well, he was responsible for his children and it's something that he should have been able to manage but again well all said and done everything already happened so um we're now we're going uh back and looking at uh, at, at what happened we're based on the scriptures account and we're trying to learn what we what we can and again make our own assessments and evaluation but all of them had a fault in it. Of course, the, 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 the brothers of Joseph, it's their fault because it's their own feelings. But again, at, uh, as the father, uh, Jacob uh, also had a responsibility, not just to, 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 to appease the, 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 uh, his other sons, but also to protect Joseph. I mean, if he was that open and he was seeing how, how the other brothers were reacting, then maybe he could have um, uh, dialed down a little on his favoritism, again, just to protect Joseph, even if it wasn't for his sake, not even for, for, for the sake of his other sons, but for, for his favorite son's sake, Joseph, so, so that the others won't hate him even more. But again, well, yeah. uh, the, 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 the favoritism continued, the hate just continued, and it all um, 
led to what uh, well later on happened in the life of Joseph well the Lord allowed it but uh, still um, regardless it still did not take the responsibility out of these different people uh, Jacob being the father and Joseph's brothers being 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 older brothers again if, if they were the, the 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 elder brothers then they could have been more understanding of the situation of their father and also Joseph but again well because of sin and now we're seeing the effects of sin in the life of of, of mankind again starting from Adam in the garden and we see how it affected the human race now instead of just being happy for one another and there's envy there's jealousy because there's sin in the heart of men and that was not God's original design but because of sin now they're having all of these negative emotions they were seeing how it's affecting humanity it's how it's affecting the, the the people even god's chosen people they were not exempt from the from, from the limitations from the from the weaknesses and even from from the the, the ugly things the negative things that sin uh, has brought into the world well uh, again um here's a uh, a commentary from robert jamieson and he says it is very natural in parents to love the youngest and feel partial to those who excel in talents or amiableness or amiableness but in a family constituted as jacob's many children by different mothers he showed great and criminal indiscretion and again uh, it's something that he should have been able to manage properly then Let's go to Joseph's dreams. Again, that was the situation. Jo- jo- Jacob wasn't careful about his favoritism. The, 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 the brothers of Joseph, they were already jealous and envious. and They already hated him for it. Now comes Joseph, eager young man, and he had the dream. But he, and he just couldn't keep it to himself. Now, Joseph dreamed two dreams that had similar implications. His first dream was about his brother's sheaves bowing down in respect to his sheaf while they were in the field. And here's some commentary by David Guzik about it. Also relevant to this dream was the fact that it involved sheaves of wheat. Joseph's ultimate position of status over his brethren would be connected with the grain and food. Again, those, to those of us who are already familiar with the account, when Joseph is finally prime minister of Egypt, then then the whole world would be in famine and Egypt would have food because of, of the, the wisdom that the, the Lord had given Joseph. Now, uh, they would again eventually be bowing down to him as prime minister of, of Egypt. And it was because Egypt had food to share, to give away, to sell to, 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 to other nations. And his second dream was about 11 stars, the sun and the moon, all bowing, bow, uh, all bowing down to him in respect. Now, uh, the stars refer to his brothers and the, the, the sun referred to, 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 to their father and the moon to their mother. Now, one might say, well, uh, Rachel was already dead and during that time, some say that uh, maybe uh, she was still alive. Maybe that was before all this happened, but uh, that might be unlikely. We can say that, well, uh, Rachel might have been dead, but uh, Leah as the... the as, a legitimate wife to Jacob would be the, the 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 mother of all their children would be would have that position of, of the of the mother in in, in the family so uh, that that referred to 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 the father and the mother in the family and the brother so they were all bowing down to him and here's a commentary from Matthew Henry on his commentary in Genesis 37 about this this um, incident well Joseph had great had a great deal of trouble before him uh, later on in his life he would be suffering he would be sold uh, he would be um, sold into slavery and then he would be, he would be serving uh, in Potiphar's house again we will study all of that uh, the, they were the fo- following accounts uh, that we're going to, to to look at and then he would he would be imprisoned so he had a great deal of trouble before him and therefore God gave him be times this prospect of his advancement to support and comfort him under the long and grievous troubles with which he was to be exercised. Thus Christ had a joy set before him and so have Christians. Now again, probably what was the point of God um, g- giving Joseph this dream? It was not 
necessarily for him to brag about his uh, to be with his brothers or not something for him to 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 tell anyone to give him comfort later on or oh, when when he would be facing these 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 challenges these difficulties in his life and he will remember well the lord had given me this vision eventually things will get better well even then uh, even if um he was um again over enthusiastic about it he was over eager and his brothers hated him for it the, the fact remained that well maybe during those times that he was suffering uh, later on in his life after this incident well he, there's a good chance that he really did remember this dream and it gave him kind of a um, uh, hope and a uh, comfort during during those times well he told both of his dreams to his brothers and included his father in the telling of his second dream now his brothers hated him more for telling them about his dreams and his arrogant words again he was over eager and perhaps he did not really mean it but he was careless and his words were arrogant here um in verses 22 to 24 um in genesis 30 well here's a, a commentary from the footnotes of the amplified bible in both verse 5 and 8 hated him even more well in in our account in genesis 37 i'm sorry in genesis 37 is properly translated but there is an interesting play on words the literal hebrew says they added to hate so they added their hate they, ad they added to hate the hebrew word for added is the same for the word for joseph the same word for joseph they joseph their hate for him. they added their hate for him now that that's genesis chapter 30 verse 22 to 24 this was the time when joseph was born and rachel named him then god remembered the prayers of rachel and god thought of her and opened her womb so she, that she would conceive so she conceived and gave birth to a son and she said god has taken away my disgrace and humiliation because leah was giving birth here <laughs> to too many sons already she named him joseph may he add and said rachel said may the lord add to me another son and later on that happened right um god gave him uh, god gave her benjamin and uh, added another son to her but uh, that was joseph's name may he add and uh, that's what she said so um when 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 the brothers hated him the account said they 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 added to their hate they joseph their hate for him interesting and um, here's a commentary from David Guzik. At best, well, uh, uh, Joseph could have meant it or maybe he was just over eager. Well, uh, here's a commentary from uh, David Guzik. At best, Joseph showed a great lack of tact. Surely he knew how much his brothers hated to hear this dream, which set him above his brother. So again, was he intentional in, in, in uh, maybe getting back with uh, with his brothers because they hated him? Maybe he just, just uh, pushing them uh uh, further but well at least uh, well, what we can say for sure that he lacked tact during that time and that's a good insight and uh, even Jacob well, after telling that, 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 that telling his brothers and even his parents about his dream well even Jacob rebuked to Joseph for his presumptuous behavior but kept his words concerning his dreams in mind now <laughs> J Jacob might have rebuked Joseph because of because again of his uh, presumptuousness, but or pre because of his presumption. But still, he kept in mind the words that Joseph said. Maybe unlike unlike Joseph's brothers, they just hated him for it. But and Jacob, well, of course he he rebuked him for it because he was being arrogant. He was being uh, uh, um, disrespectful or or or. Um, uh, not thinking about the situation and not being sensitive or insensitive and that would be a better term he was insensitive about the situation so jacob was rebuking him but still he kept it in mind well uh, here's commentary from matthew henry jacob like mary again in luke chapter 2 verse 50 verse 51 kept these things in his heart and no doubt remembered them long afterwards when the event answered to the prediction many years later they will realize that um uh, this this dream had 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 been uh realized that they would see it and and then they, they would know so even jacob when it happened probably remembered this 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 instance in their lives 
Now, before we end our study, let's see some spiritual insights and principles about the, 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 the things that have transpired in this account. Well, here's a commentary from David Guzik. He said, God's word to everyone is this concerning family. Well, your messed up family, past, present, or future, does not mean God has forsaken you or that some cloud has come over you that will never pass. God works in and through difficult and messed up families like Abraham, his family, Isaac's family, and now Jacob's family. So your family is not, again, uh, uh, not all of us have have messed up families, but but we know that uh, there are families that are really dysfunctional. But again, that's not a limitation. If you happen to be in in a messed up or in a dysfunctional family, don't let that limit you because God is not limited by it. Let God work through you despite your situation. And God, well, Joseph, he, he, he led him and brought him up and became, eventually became prime minister of Egypt and saved the world during that time. It's, it's in the scripture's account, right? It might not happen to you exactly. I mean, having that grand, uh, grand display of God's grace and His plan for your life, but God definitely has a plan for you. It might not be something that would be recorded in a history book or something like the scriptures, but God, he, he will record it in his heart and in the, for him in the history of all of humanity, it will be there. But regardless of, 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 of its publicity, regardless of, of how grand it might be, as far as your life is concerned, it's important to God. So again, don't let your situation right now limit you because it does not limit God. Only you can limit you by running away from the Lord. Let God work in your life well there was no real again concerning um joseph uh, joseph's presumption yeah there was no real need for joseph to tell his brothers about his dreams again if you think about it if it was for his comfort later on in his life there was really no need for him to tell his brothers yeah, he dreamed a dream his brothers hated him and <clears throat> there was no reason for him to, to tell his brothers again if Unless he was really, really, again, over eager or he was just not thinking at all. He was insensitive, right? Or he was, again, presumptuous or uh, he was, was presuming on his brothers. Well, he could have just sought his father's advice about it. If he really couldn't keep it, he could have just told his father about it. And again, if it was not in such a setting that uh, Jacob might not, again, have rebuked him because uh, as uh, as it was it's like as if joseph was telling all of them and he was making this presentation hey again i have, I have this dream and oh, what could it mean i mean <laughs> the meaning oh, the implication was obvious so i mean maybe when he was uh, telling them about this dream and again even his brothers uh, picked up on it and said are you saying you're gonna rule uh, over us someday right so again then he said another dream right again there was no need for that but he did so uh, but he could have just told his father about it and maybe uh, their, their, uh, his brothers wouldn't have Joseph to their hate <laughs> even more. Well, uh, but if he was really concerned by, by the dream, if he was uh, wondering what it would have meant, well, he would have just again went to his father and uh, sought his advice. Well, saying his dreams before all his brothers and his father was unnecessary and vain. Again, he might be lacking in tact, but it was unnecessary to feign, especially since it was no secret that his brothers hated him. And Joseph was 17 years old at the time. It would be unlikely for him to be unaware of the tension between him and his brothers. So um, their father wasn't, wasn't the Jacob, but he wasn't um, as secretive about it. It was very obvious about his favoritism and his brothers weren't also secretive about their hate towards him. So they were also obvious uh, about that. They, they, they made sure Joseph knew that. So um, there, there was uh, no reason for Joseph not to, to, to kind of read the, the, the room. And he was a smart young lad. He was the son of his old age, of Jacob's old age, right? He was a, he was a, smart, so a smart young man. But I hear he was just lacking in tact or maybe he was just really... Um, over eager or yeah, maybe kind of a little getting back <laughs> the brothers i don't know but again at the end of the day it, it was not something that he should have done and here's a commentary from uh, david gusick if joseph was unwise to tell the first dream 
knowing how irritating it was to his brothers, then it was worse to share this second dream about the, the stars, the sun, and the moon. That is, the second dream was likely to cause even more resentment because it set him not only above his brothers, but also set him above his father and mother. He continues, Joseph had a sort of pride common in the favored and blessed. He was so focused on how great his dreams were for him, he didn't begin to consider how the dreams would sound in the ears of others. And again, um, there's nothing wrong about being happy with God's blessings, but there's also no reason for you to brag about it right? with others. If you're blessed by God, just accept it and thank the Lord for it. But again, if, if you know it's going to be sensitive towards others, then again, and uh, it doesn't mean that you're going to keep your testimony to the fact that you already received it and people can see it again. And that's already a testimony in itself and the, how, how you respond to the Lord for it, uh, to, because of it. But um, and it, it takes wisdom to know whether you, you, you can share it. And you share it with, with the people you know who would, who would rejoice with you. But in, in Joseph's case, he, he already knew that his brothers hated him. And then for him to, to, even if there was a blessing that he was seeing, for, for him to share it with his brothers. And then again, there's, there's a good chance that he knew that they wouldn't like it. Again, but if you're in a similar, similar situation, choose the people you would um, talk about these things, and those who would not misunderstand you or just respond to God in worship. Again, in Joseph's case, well, it was, it was, um, it was kind of again, it, it, it didn't sound, sound as, as, as good as it sounded to him for his brothers. Well, uh, David Guzzi continues, though Joseph was wrong to tell these dreams, they certainly did come true. One, one may receive a wonderful message from God that he does not intend them to publish to others. Joseph showed a lack of wisdom here perhaps rooted in pride. And again, there are many factors. And again, Joseph wasn't perfect, but uh, he was a good lad. He was a smart lad, but uh, it, doesn't, it didn't mean that he was perfect. So maybe he had his, his faults here and there, but and still, again, it was not, um, still did not justify how his brothers reacted. But um, he, again, uh, on his own, could also have um, prevented the things that, had, that, that, that he did. If he had, uh, well, if uh, he was more sensitive or he was more considerate about his father. So again, uh, we, we don't know that the family dynamics, it was already like that, it was messed up. Again, uh, David Gutzik said that it was messed up, but still, again, uh, being the smart lad that he was, this is not, this is not something that um, uh, he could not have thought about. So again, maybe he, was, he had this little pride in him or that, that led him to be over eager about sharing it with his brothers. Well, Jacob, now again, despite all that and Jacob rebuking him, but Jacob kept the words of Joseph concerning his dreams in mind, wondering about their meaning. Now, why? Because God, he also spoke to Jacob through dreams. If you remember in Genesis chapter 28, uh, when he saw angels ascending and descending on a ladder, extending uh, all the way to heaven when he was running from Esau, right? And then he called the place Bethel. So God spoke to him, and God, God spoke to, to, to Jacob at that time and said that, uh, that my promise to, to, to Abraham, to Isaac, I'm going to promise to you. Then later on in Genesis chapter 31, when Laban was cheating Jacob with the fox, then later on he, he shared with his wives, Leah and Rachel, that hey, your, your father was cheating me, but God uh, spoke to me in a dream. So he was familiar with how the Lord would be speaking through dreams. So when Joseph shared his dream, to them, well, he rebuked Joseph, but at the same time, he kept what Joseph said, his words in his heart, and wondered about their meaning because he was probably thinking, "Hey, maybe the Lord is really saying something to the lad." Because it was, it, it it's not um, uh, uh, unfamiliar uh, for the Lord to speak through dreams during their time. Now, here's um, a commentary, uh, a final commentary from uh, David Gusick, at least in our study tonight. Uh, the Bible tells us that God may speak through dreams, but it doesn't give us a guidebook for dream interpretation. Again, uh, we, we might see different dreams and interpretations here, but uh, it, it doesn't mean that we can now interpret the dreams of others because again, uh, dreams today may, may just be dreams. Again, we're not saying that the, the Lord did, will not speak to us, but we already have the, the, the Bible, again, it is said here, he continues, most of all, know the Bible. 
to know the voice of God. If we want to know God's will, will for our lives or for the lives of other people, don't, don't, don't try to interpret their dreams. Don't try to have your dreams interpreted or you yourself to interpret your dreams. Know the Bible because we now have the Bible, God's written word, His message to us. If we want to know His will, well, we search the scriptures. We should expect that God speaks to us in the Bible. And if He were to speak in the dream, it would be an expected Jesus Christ when he was here with his disciples and when the people were asking him for a sign he said well there will be no more signs given to you and because now we have the scriptures that the, the account of of how God interacted with his people and his message his prophecies his message his his, his um, uh, guidelines for humanity for his people to those who would believe in Jesus Christ we have the scriptures today so to conclude, we can appreciate actually how Jacob's faulty parenting in terms of favoritism. Again, was, he wasn't that bad. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't a failure as a, as a parent, but in terms of favoritism, well, he, he kind of um, was lacking in that area because he, he did not, again, he, he, he was not able to control it. And also, Joseph's youthful presumption were not omitted. We can appreciate that both of these, uh, Jacob's favoritism and Joseph's youthful presumption, were not omitted in the Bible when it was compiled. Despite the fact, again, because the, 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 the ones who have compiled the Bible, they could have just removed those negative things. Because despite the fact that both men were highly regarded and significant in the, in the scriptures account. If you want to make the, the, the account or God's people look good, remove the things that would make him look bad, right? But the, the, the scriptures, again, the, the ones who compiled it did not remove it because it was God's will. It was God's spirit leading them. So the Lord did not lead them to take those out. God maybe led them to include all of those things instead. But this highlights the reality that a perfect plan, God's plan for mankind, is not conceptualized and carried out by imperfect beings such as man. Because the glory would go to man, right? It is orchestrated and fulfilled by a perfect entity who is God. God is the center. God is the focus. It is His story. Shall we pray? Father, thank you because you are perfect. You are faithful despite our unfaithfulness or our, our faithlessness and despite our weaknesses our imperfections our flaws you will remain perfect and our weaknesses our imperfections do not affect your plan in our lives help us father to trust you trust in your wisdom trust in your love for us and trust that you are in control of our lives thank you for your grace in jesus name amen Thank you very much for your time and may you join us again next time as we learn from God's Word.